Hello everyone, my name is Selena Harris and I'm the current Kenosha Decade Canals Fellow and a member of the Lunch and Learn Committee. Um, today I'll be moderating this next seminar and I'm very excited to introduce Gretchen Spencer. Gretchen is serving as a policy analyst to the Chief of Staff for NOAA's Oceanic and Atmospheric Research Office for her Canals Fellowship and today she'll be doing a breakdown discussion on the basics of NOAA research. Prior to her appointment with NOAA Research, Gretchen completed her Master's of Science in Marine Science at Nova Southeastern University and her Bachelor's of Science from the University of Maine. She has a broad-ranging research background covering things from Arctic phytoplankton to biogeochemical processes and mangroves. She's worked with endangered sea turtles and conducted public education across a range of marine science topics. In her free time, Gretchen loves to spend time outdoors, whether it's reading a book, kayaking, or water skiing back at her family camp in Maine. She loves music and theater, as well as playing board games and card games with her family and friends. Now I'm excited to turn it over to her. Awesome, thanks so much, Selena. Um, so again, my name is Gretchen Spencer, and I am the OAR Front Office Fellow this year. Um, and so I wanna give you all a little bit of a breakdown of what NOAA, uh, NOAA OAR is, um, and kind of from my perspective as a fellow. So what is uh, the Oceanic and Atmospheric Research or NOAA Research Division? Um, we provide research that foundationalizes the understanding of the complex systems that support our planet. We work under the broad themes of climate, uh, weather and air quality, and ocean and coastal resources. And so our NOAA scientists study the ocean's depths and the highest research of space to better understand our entire environment. We deliver a mission-based alliance of research that the other line offices within NOAA depend on to produce their operational products and explore cutting-edge research to deliver knowledge um, and technology for the needed for science and information uh, of technology. This helps better uh, enable us for better forecasting, earlier warning systems of natural disasters, as well as encourage the new and blue economy. So our role of our science is to provide an unbiased science to better manage our environment, um, both nationally as well as globally. So who is NOAA Research? Um, as most of us know, um, NOAA is broken down into six line offices, and our ocean and atmospheric research is one of the six line offices, and we are led by, oops, sorry, uh, we are led by um, the wonderful Assistant Administrator, uh, Dr. Steve Thur. Um, Dr. Thur came on as the acting AA back in um, October of 2022. Now, when we get into this a little bit deeper um, into our uh, kind of broken down org chart, um, as a lot of uh, NOAA likes to do, uh, you can see that we are broken down into programs, laboratories, as well as offices. And these are overseen by our administrators, um, as well as our deputy assistant administrators. Now, I don't think the org charts are as nice to look at, so why don't we break it down into actual locations? So our locations uh, of our labs and programs are spread uh, throughout the country. Um, we have 10 labs that are located across the country um, with additional um, divisions in Nevada, Idaho, and Tennessee for our ARL division. Um, we have the PMEL lab division in Oregon, and then our GML lab has observatory facilities in California, Hawaii, Alaska, as well as the American Samoa. Now our six program offices, as well as our headquarter divisions are all located in Silver Springs, Maryland. Um, and they all range um, for broad topics um, that do help discover uh, NOAA's mission. Oops, sorry, but we can't do it alone. Uh, so NOAA um, also partners with a lot of um, partnerships both in academia as well as in the industry level. And so this partnerships includes um, our CIs or cooperative institutes. There are 19 of these consortiums around the United States um, that house um, over 80 um, academic institutes that help produce research with our NOAA scientists um, to get research out to all the divisions. We also have our Sea Grant program that is um, the state Sea Grant programs, I should say, uh, that are centered all around the country in all of our um, 34 locations, as well as locations in Guam and Puerto Rico. Now, these are our partners that we partner with most uh, indefinitely within our labs and program offices. However, we also have other federal um, government as well as non-government industry um, and private sectors that we partner with. 
So when I say the front office, what does that mean? If you look at this organization chart, you don't see a front office. Well, when I say front office, I mean that we sit here underneath the AA and the DAA's office. And who does that make up? This is our team. Uh, so my front office um, is under the leadership of our chief of staff, Jim Jenkins. We also have three assistant, or sorry, we have an assistant chief of staff um, who is um, actually on a detail to the White House currently. We have three special assistants uh, who work for our AAs and our DAAs. We have um, the program coordinator, uh, sorry, the program coordination officer who sits at the liaison between um, NOAA headquarters and NOAA OAR, our Ocean Decade team, as well as many program um, analysts and our co controlled correspondence unit. Um, so this is the team I work with on a daily basis. Um, and I'm gonna go into a little bit more about uh, what we do at NOAA. So let's get into it. Let's talk about NOAA, um, the headquarter office. So what do I mean by the headquarters? Well, the headquarters is going to be our um, division that's in two sections. So our um, staff offices are led by our DAA, Ms. Emily Manashis. And these things include our chief financial, chief financial office and our chief administrative office, our communications division, the EEO and diversity program, as well as our international activities. Um, we also have within these multiple divisions that get broken out, such as our congressional analysis division, MOD, budget, and Emily is the one who oversees all of these divisions. On the next side, we have um, Dr. Gary Matlock, who oversees our Office of Science and Support, our IT department, as well as the Office of Research Transition Application. So the OSS offices uh, manages our three kind of main institutes, our cooperative institutes, which I talked about earlier, those 19 divisions around the country, um, NOAA Central Library, who of course is hosting uh, this wonderful seminar today, and our Science Advisory Board. ORDA, um, or, or uh, the Office of Research and Transition and Application, um, also is the home to our uncrewed systems as our Technology Partnership Alliance. Now let's start diving into, again, that broader reach within our organization charts. So with our OAR programs, led by the wonderful Miss Emily. So we're gonna start off with our climate program office. Um, these, again, all of our programs are located here in Silver Spring. Um, so we are in the third building um, of the main campus and uh, CPO can be found on the 12th floor. Um, the program office, um, has a mission of advancing the Earth system and social sciences integrated information and service to build a climate ready nation. Uh, so CPO's advanced scientific understanding and monitoring and prediction of climate and its impacts to enable the effective decisions that Earth systems and modeling um, for climate, which does help then with the social interactions, education and communication out to the general public. Um, they have the wonderful program of our assessments program, and this is an effort led by the CPO program, which aims to improve our ability to understand, assess, anticipate, and respond to the impacts and vulnerabilities associated with environmental change within the U.S. Um, as you can see, they have a, ride, a wide variety um, that they actually dip their hands into. They have a lot of partners that they work with, um, as well as hosting a lot of fellowships for post-docs. Um, and undergraduate and graduate students. On to GOMO, or the Global Ocean Monitoring and Observation Network. Uh, so GOMO can be found on the second floor of the third building, um, and they have the mission to provide and support high quality global ocean observations and research to improve the scientific understanding and inform society about its rules and environmental change. Now, GOMO operates using four main platforms of technology, our Argo, gliders, drifters, and moored buoys. Um, they have provided over 50% of the global observation network system um, across the United States. And this is just an example of the type of data that we are getting from GOMO. As you can see, we have observations globally that we are being supported by. This is working with U.S. partners as well as um, international partners. However, as most of us know, we still have a very large um, misunderstanding or non-understanding of what is happening in the ocean. Um, so GOMO was working on providing continued support moving forward uh, in uh, discovering what's out in our ocean. 
the National Sea Grant College Program. Um, obviously, as a Canals Fellow, I have a very soft spot for this program in my heart. Um, the uh, NSGO program is located on the 11th floor and SSMC3. Um, and the Sea Grant College program is a network of 34 Sea Grant programs located in every coastal uh, and Great Lakes state, as well as Puerto Rico, Lake Champlain, and Guam. The programs serve as a core of dynamic and national um, university based nest as a university-based network, um, and they uh, oversee over 300 institutions that involve more than 3,000 scientific staff, engineers, educators, and students um, to provide outreach and education to the general public. Their network engages in the power of academia as well as a wide variety of partners to address issues such as coastal hazards, sustainable coastal development, as well as safety safety. Now, another program that um, the NSGO program uh, supplies is uh, not only the Canals Fellowship Program that uh, many of us are a uh, member of, they also fund the NMFS Sea Grant Fellowship Program, um, as well as hold a variety of seminars across the United States in supporting getting research and funds out to local um, organizations. The next program we're going to talk about is the Ocean Acidification Program. Uh, they are located on the 12th floor, and they have the mission of um, advancing Earth systems and social science, integrated information, and service to build a climate-ready nation. They have many partners within NOAA, as well as across interagency. They are part of an interagency working group on ocean acidification um, that is aimed at trying to unify and get out as much public information about ocean acidification as possible. Um, they are part of the GOA ON program, and they work closely with their stakeholders um, and public to promote and provide uh, the national and global voice to ocean acidification. Our next program is the Ocean Exploration and Research Division. They are located on the second floor in Silver Springs. And they are, um, their goal is to advance earth systems and social sciences, integrated information, and build that um, services to build a climate ready nation. Uh, they have many partners within um, both uh, NOAA as well as government agency, but they also are exploring across the world. They prioritize in exploring the US EEZ in deep waters, um, and they have current missions in Alaska and the Channel Islands that they are out um, conducting. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, up in the top image, you can see um, the ship Okeanos, um, which is the main ship that they use to go out and partner um, uh, with their explorations. Um, so these missions uh, currently happening in Alaska is Seascape Alaska, and this will be continuing on for the year of 2023. And our last program within OAR is the Weather Program Office. Uh, they are located on the 11th floor of the building, and they are advancing earth systems and social sciences, integrated information um, to build a climate ready nation. They have many partners, particularly with um, the National Weather Service, and they are working on um, developing programs and models that can help improve our forecasting network availability. So EPIC, um, or the Earth Prediction um, Innovation Center, is a unified um, community of weather modeling and advanced numerical weather precipitations that uses open source and open science methods to get information out um, to people about the improvement of weathers. Of course, most people may know about the Weather Act, and this is a main priority that the uh, WP office focuses on. Now let's move on to our laboratories. Now our laboratories are overseen by Dr. Gary Matlock. Uh, we have 10 main labs, um, with four of them co-housed um, out in Boulder, Colorado. Um, our labs conduct integrated programs of research, development, and services to understand the Earth systems and to describe the changes that are happening to them. Our laboratories also have their field stations, and those are centered all across the United States, as well as within the world. So to start off, we'll be heading to the Air Resource Laboratory. This is our closest lab to us. It's actually located in College Park, Maryland. They also have divisions in Nevada, Idaho, and Tennessee. Now they study the physical and chemical processes that occur 
all across the lower atmospheric levels. ARL's atmospheric models are used to generate highly localized forecasts to respond to a variety of emerging um, emergencies that may include chemical and nuclear related uh, industrial accidents, wildfires, volcanoes, and high impact air pollution episodes. One of the products they are most known for is HiSplit, and that is a complete system for computing simple air parcel trajectories, as well as a complex transport dispersion of chemical transformants and deposits of simulators. Um, what you can see pictured here is actually from our visit to their lab back um, earlier this spring, and this is their air resource car. Uh, this car is decked out that when it drives around, you can see in situ uh, measurements being taken of um, chemicals that are being um, moved throughout um, the atmosphere. Our next lab is the Atlantic Oceanographic and Meteorological Laboratory, or AOML. This is located in Miami, Florida. Um, their mission is to study and research focuses within the Atlantic Ocean and to inform the accurate forecasting of extreme weather and ocean ocean phenomena that manage the marine resources and understanding of climate change and associated impacts. Um, this improves our ocean and weather services for the region, nation, and the world. So a lot of the focus coming out of AOML um, is on hurricanes, our coastal ecosystem, um, and how those are all being affected um, for our human health, as well as climate change across the globe. Um, many of the things that they are partnered with are actually um, partnering within other uh, NOAA agencies. Um, so one of the closest partners they have is the National Weather Service. And this is actually a picture when we went over to the National Hurricane Center on our trip down to see how our hurricane research at AOML actually ties in and is being uh, implemented there at the Hurricane Center to predict um, and better forecast these hurricane uh, ecosystems. Of course, they also work on um, systems such as sargassum, which we may hear about in the news currently, um, corals, as well as other marine uh, resources. Our next lab is the Geophysical Fluid Dynamics Laboratory, GFDL. This is located in Princeton, New Jersey, um, and their mission is to have the develop and use of Earth system models and computer simulators to improve our understanding and predictions of all aspects of climate. Um, they are advancing the understanding of our whole impacts of systems and using a lot of high tech or high uh, performance computing systems to model both um, in situ about you know up to minutes out as well as longer forecasting. Um, so these are some of our world leading computer models that are coming out of this lab. Um, and we have many partners that we work with them within NOAA as well as within industry and government as well. Our Great Lakes Environmental Research Laboratory, also known as GLURL, is our only freshwater laboratory within OAR. Uh, this is located in um, Ann Arbor, Michigan, as well as their field station in Muskegon. Um, and they have the mission of conducting, uh, conducting Great Lakes research um, on the coastal as well as in the in ecosystem. Um, and they are developing um, projects that are working there as well as can be implied elsewhere. So they are doing a lot of research on um, harmful algal blooms as well as with sea ice concentrations. And these types of experiments can be passed on to other locations. They work very heavily with AOML on the harmful algal blooms. Um, with things that are happening along the coast, um, in the Gulf of Mexico and in Florida. Sea ice, they actually do experiments at Glural um, when the lakes freeze over, testing out um, instruments that they then bring up to the Arctic to do Arctic research as well. Um, they have a lot to do with our invasive species um, research, um, thinking about green crabs as well as carp and things like that. Um, so we use a ton of instruments, whether it be ships, um, or autonomous vehicles such as the gliders, the buoys, as well as drones, which is what is here on the landing pad, uh, to get in situ measurements um, for these really cool um, experiments that are happening out in our Great Lakes systems. The National Severe Storms Laboratory is located in Norman, Oklahoma. And they have the main mission of un observing, understanding, and modeling severe storms um, and researches um, that span from weather radar to tornadoes, flash floods, lightning, damaging wind, hail, and winter weather. Uh, they partner with a lot of our um, labs as well as the weather service um, to really get our people and our um, 
folks that we are working with the best, most accurate predictions um, for these severe storms. So we had the pleasure of going out to Norman uh, back my second week on my fellowship. Um, and we actually got to go see some of these test beds that they have, um, uh, the new um, and most uh, up-to-date phased ra array radar, or PAR, um, as well as getting to see some of the um, Severe Storms test bed. Uh, now, the Severe Storm test bed, which is located um, here, is a co-op um, that uh, NSSL is, has with the National Weather Service. And this is where they actually work together to test and see when these storms come in, um, the best predictions that they can make to get out to people. Um, so it's a huge co-op between these two programs. Um, but then out in the field, um, they have uh, their PAR stations. Um, and as you can see, um, we're using Doppler uh, weather radar to actually do 360 view um, to predict these weather, uh, these severe storms. Um, so NSSL has multiple of these stations all throughout the country. Within Norman, they have um, three sites. This one here is about 60 feet in the air. Um, so as you can see, uh, I was very excited that I didn't fall down um, <laughs> this very high platform um, after we got to go up inside and actually see how the radar actually works. Um, it was not working while we were in the building, um, but it was ex very exciting to see uh, this type of uh, technology um, and how it's being used to predict um, more accurately these severe storms that actually help um, get out to our, uh, our audiences. The Pacific Marine Laboratory is our next um, lab that we'll be heading to. Um, so far in my fellowship, I've been lucky enough to go to all of our labs except for this one. So I'm hoping to get out to Seattle uh, to visit PMEL and learn a little bit more about their um, science hands-on. But they have the really cool projects of conducting observations that are used to improve weather and climate, um, as well as managing our fisheries and our coastal resilience. Um, so a lot of the research areas at PML include ocean acidification, tsunami detection, forecasting, um, air-sea inter-exchanges. They do a lot with hydrothermal vent systems um, and looking at a lot of the long-term climate monitoring analysis. They are actually celebrating their 50th anniversary this coming fall. Um, so we are very excited, or excuse me, at the late summer. Uh, so we are very excited to have them um, being a part of our uh, OAR home base as well. Now, Ezreal. What is Ezreal? Our Earth Systems Resource Laboratories. Um, you may hear this name thrown about, and this is actually a conglomerate of four of our labs all held together um, in Boulder, Colorado. Um, so let's get into what those four labs are specifically. We'll start with our Chemical Sciences Laboratory. Um, so CSL performs research in key society uh, relevant areas, including air quality, climate, and the stratosphere. Um, so CSL is known for having this really cool truck. Um, we have lots of cool technology in the research division. Um, and this is called Pumas, or Pickup Based Mobile Atmospheric Surrounder, uh, Sounder. Excuse me. Um, now, they actually will drive this truck into events um, where they can actually uh, on the top of the truck and in the bed. Um, they have equipment set up that will be actually taking in situ measurements, again, reading what is in the air quality and finding out what that chemistry is being made up of. Not only do they do this for trucks, they actually put them onto our planes uh, as well. And so um, they have the, the Sabre mission um, occurring um, in Alaska um, and as well as the Cal 5. So this is where, um, Planes are being flown into either Alaska to check out measurements that are happening up, up in our cold areas, as well as in California where our fires are conditioning. So we're able to get in situ measurements of what's happening in these really um, dense environments. The Global Monitoring Laboratory, or GML, is a, our second laboratory in Boulder. Um, they have the mission of performing reference measurements and research focus on the role of the atmosphere and global climate forcing of the ozone and background um, information on air quality. So GML maintains calibration scales and provides um, support to the World Meteorological Organizations um, and a lot of the global atmospheric watch programs. 
they have observing facilities in California, Hawaii, Alaska, American Samoa, um, as well as at the South Pole. They do research really uh, for long-term data sets. Um, so at our um, Hawaii-based institute, this is where you will actually get the measurements um, on Mauna Loa, uh, where the Keeling curve of the, the CO2 atmosphere um, graph that we all know very, uh, most of us hopefully know very well, um, actually comes from. We can do measurements um, based off these really cool weather balloons. Um, and this is gonna be getting information again of all of the different long-term monitoring so we can see what's happening in our atmosphere as things change. Our next lab is the Global Systems Laboratory. Um, and they have the mission to improve environmental predictions, models, develop state-of-the-art science decisions, um, to, excuse me, <laughs> uh, develop state-of-the-art science decisions to support tools and visualization systems, and use high-performance computing technology to support weather radar nation. So you can actually see in these pictures, um, these are some of the example models that um, GSL is using to predict um, these very high, um, well-known resolution systems. Um, and these are examples of rapid refresh as well as high resolution rapid refresh. Um, these are being used in examples for monitoring fire weather, hurricanes, as well as other weather prediction centers. And then our last of the ESRO laboratories is our physical science laboratory. Um, they have the mission to conduct research to improve observations, understanding, modeling, prediction of weather, water, and climate extremes um, on their most severe impacts. Um, a lot of the information that PSL is doing has the theme of water. They are looking at how much precipitation is coming in, whether it is rain, snow, sleet, et cetera, and how that is being affected in um, various and sundry locations. Um, some of these are being used up in our most Arctic extreme nations, as well as sometimes being used in areas that have never previously had snow, but are now getting inundated with snow as climate change is affecting these um, in, in various uh, areas. So what are some of the key takeaways um, to learn about OER? So OER is providing products and services that describe and predict changes to the environment. Um, we have the very strong portfolio of climate, weather, oceans, and coastal and Great Lake portfolios. So any of the research that is coming out of our labs and programs um, is completely helping uh, to get better projects um, from our scientists right out to the general public. We have the um, goal to conduct research to help understand and predict the Earth systems better. We're trying to develop technology to improve NOAA science, as well as be stewards to the land. Um, something that I was kind of not as familiar with are the modeling systems, and OAR is full of models. So if you are a computer scientist, computer engineer, or love to code, uh, OAR is the place for you. At the end of the day, uh, we do work a lot with our um, partners. So our, our goal at the end of the day is to research and develop within OAR, but then transition it out into the general public where our products can then be implemented to use and help society in a more sustainable way. But the last key takeaway is that overall, we are a really fun group. Uh, I love being a part of this organization. Um, it's been a great fellowship so far, um, but I am not alone in it. I actually have 19 other fellows that are a part of my class that are all placed around um, various labs and programs within OAR. So if you have any questions, um, particularly about uh, the positions that they are in, please feel free to reach out to us um, or myself and be happy to answer any more questions. And with that, um, I wanna thank you all for listening to my little deep dive about NOAA OAR.